κύριοι, καλή σα μέρα. Για άλλη μια φορά από του Δελφού. Τελευταία μέρα, τελευταίε ώρε πλέον για το Delphi Economic Forum. Πρέπει να συγχαρούμε για άλλη μια φορά του διοργανωτέ, γιατί αυτέ οι μέρε που πέρασαν έβγαλαν πραγματικά πολύ σημαντικέ ειδήσει και πέρασαν πολύ σημαντικέ προσωπικότητε. Σήμερα μιλάμε για επενδύσει, σήμερα μιλάμε για ξένε επενδύσει στην Ελλάδα. Και έχω τη χαρά και την τιμή να συνομιλήσω με έναν άνθρωπο που έκανε αυτό που δεν έκαναν πολλοί άλλοι. Ήρθε να επενδύσει στην Ελλάδα το 2015, σε μια περίοδο πάρα πολύ δύσκολη, σε μια περίοδο από επένδυση. Ο άνθρωπο αυτό επέλεξε να μα πει του λόγου και γιατί το έκανε να έρθει στην Ελλάδα και από τότε ήρθε και έχει παραμείνει. Uh, τώρα θα το γυρίσω στα αγγλικά. Let me switch in English and let me welcome the owner of Switch Group, uh, Mr. Taizun Korakivala. Welcome, Mr. Korakivala. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for inviting me to this forum. Uh, it's a big honor and a big pleasure. And of course, thank you, Delphi Forum, for having me. And uh, this is my first interview in Greece, so please go a little easy on me. <laughs> Don't get me into trouble. <laughs> I'll try to do my best. Okay. So, can I call you Taizun after uh, six, seven years in Greece, um, investing in Greece? How do you feel? Uh, from a business point of view, uh, I was introduced, or rather, I came to Greece uh, backing a professional who I met in uh, Bombay, Mumbai now, Elias Davos. And he brought me to Greece and uh, over the last six, seven years, I've had partnerships, continuing partnerships with very high quality uh, Greek entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We've had good business, we have created synergies, we have uh, created brands that are now uh, pride of Greece. Uh, so overall, I'm very happy for, uh, from a business point of view, on a personal level. Mm -hmm. I enjoy being in Greece. I now spend uh, a lot of my summers here. I've built a house here, so I've got my children and my friends now visiting, so Greece has given me homes, friends, and uh, a great time. Um, most foreign investors in Greece are funds. Uh, apparently, Swiss Group is not a fund. What is Swiss Group? Can you give us some more information, the profile of uh, your company? Yes, yes. As you said, we are a private company. I'm the owner. We operate in about 10 countries uh, around the world, all the way from Australia on one side to Greece on the other. Mm -hmm. We started out in the Middle East. Uh, we operate in three Middle East countries. We also mm -hmm. operate in developing countries like India, Sri Lanka. Where in the Middle East? Uh, Dubai, uh, Oman, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia was where we actually started 43 years ago. Mm -hmm. So Saudi Arabia is still our largest uh, market. About 50% of our revenues come from Saudi Arabia. Our headquarters is Dubai. Mm -hmm. And we also operate in countries like Philippines, India, where Philippines is where my wife comes from. And India is where I was born and uh, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka. So we actually operate in different economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, level countries. And you are, let's say, a leader company in the food industry, right. in bakery. In, in bakery. We, we operate more or less strictly in the bakery sector. Mm -hmm. We are bakery focused ingredients, uh, retail, industrial bakeries. We have uh, two investments in Greece, which are outside the sector. Mm -hmm. uh, which are? Optima Bank and uh, uh, Spirit of Life uh, brand, which uh, many people in Greece call Kava. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, it's called Oak or Oak, Oak. In, in Greece. So we're trying to expand that brand uh, from just a simple, uh, you know, kava to a lifestyle brand. Mm -hmm. And I think we are succeeding quite well, quite well on that. Could you give us some more information about yourself, your background, and how did you start all this journey to, uh, let's say, business a, and investment? So I hope you have a little bit of patience with your long journey. But <laughs> we have time, don't worry. <laughs> you can watch also the, the clock, so we're going to arrange So I'm time. 67, so I'll start from my ancestry, maybe 100 years before that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I come from a business family, and a lot of uh, person's uh, background comes from where he comes, you know, what's his ancestry. So my grandfather, my father, they were all businessmen. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, my, uh, they, they migrated from their small town in Gujarat to Bombay mm -hmm. uh, more than 130 years ago. And uh, my father was the sheriff of Bombay. He was also the vice chancellor of a university, mm -hmm. or chancellor of a university. So he was a very powerful influence. He was a big man in Bombay. He was one of the grand old men. He died at 93. So he's been a, had a very powerful influence on me. Then I went to university in, again, in a small town. Mm -hmm. It was a technological university. It was more focused on learning rather than careers. So there it laid the foundation for my lifelong learning. So I've always been a learner after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then at 23, I migrated. I came to Saudi Arabia, and I started my entrepreneurial journey with Switz Group. And after that, there has been no real looking back. For 43 years, God has been kind. We have always had a good year every year. Mm -hmm. And it, during the COVID period, actually, from nine, 2019 to 22, mm -hmm. we actually grew 50%. Mm -hmm. So, even in times of crisis, we have grown well. So, let's talk uh, more specifically for the way you're doing business. Uh, I see that in all the companies you have invested, you allow your partners to continue leading the company. Uh, how has this worked so far? And why are you doing this? Uh, it's simple. I think uh, my partners, I, I select good partners. I, we want, we invest in healthy companies, not in sick companies. Mm -hmm. So, my partners are obviously doing, they, they know what they're doing. They have their reasons to sell. It might be because of succession, it might mm -hmm. be because of growth, it might be because they would like to expand. But they are healthy companies, they are good partners, they are smart people. Mm -hmm. I, of course, give them a global perspective, I give them some financial support, I give them ambition, mm -hmm. and uh, it works that way. And now in Greece, we have, uh, we employ maybe about a thousand people now. Already? Yeah. And which are the, the criteria you choose a company? Uh, for, we don't go for big acquisition because we think that uh, it's, it's the space where the funds operate. You know, they don't want to get messed up in small deals. Mm -hmm. So anything that is more than 50 million, 100 million, we don't get into that space. We are in the 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 25 million, that kind of size. Mm -hmm. So where there is, uh, you know, nobody really would like to operate there because it's too much of a headache to, mm -hmm. to, to go after that and manage those companies. But why my style is I let the partners manage it, so I don't have a problem. So, so people are very uh, important uh, in the way for you, uh, you choose a company, you choose a country. I, I invest in people. I very, very seldom invest in a business. Mm -hmm. So I invested with Ilias in Greece. I invested with my partners in companies. I, mm -hmm. Of course, the business model is important. We are smart people, commercial people. That's right. But we make many mistakes. Mm -hmm. But when you get the person right, mm -hmm. you don't make mistakes. Uh, you made investments in Greece, in Cyprus, and in Turkey. So you see potential in the region? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, all these are three high-quality countries. They, you know, they have a great civilization behind and a great future ahead. Mm -hmm. They are going through turbulent times in the last, I would say, what, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get messed up, of course. You had the junta here. Right now, Turkey is going through trouble because mm -hmm. of their economy, inflation. Cyprus had the partition. Mm -hmm. So there are troubles, but they bounce back because there are high quality mm -hmm. civilizations. They are all connected. Mm -hmm. You have a common culture, in, particularly in food, mm -hmm. uh, geographically close by. So we think that there is potential in mm -hmm. synergies also. Tell us about your industry, the food industry, especially the bakery industry. You know, uh, the bakery industry is now a global industry. It, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, uh, it transcends countries. Mm -hmm. Everybody eats pastries, everybody eats bread, everybody eats, sometimes it could be flat, sometimes it's raised, you know, different kinds of bread. Mm -hmm. But bakery is the most, uh, most uh, versatile of all industries, food industries in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the wheat flour is, is, is God's gift to mankind versus any other kind of grain because of the 
different characteristics of that. So I, I love the bakery industry. I have been in it for 43 years. I really don't want to get out of it. It has endless scope and endless potential. Mm -hmm. It has so many different variations from cookies to bread to pastries to, you know, it's, it's, it's delightful. It's very creative also. Mm -hmm. How is to be successful uh, in 10 countries? What's the secret? Ah, well, first of all, luck, mm -hmm. God's grace, great family, support. Mm -hmm. Without that, you can't do anything. So besides that, I think, uh, I, I think trust is a very important aspect of my, mm -hmm. my thinking process. And that actually came about when I was in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we, I had to build a trust-based business system because in those days, in the 80s, there was no real legislation, no laws, nothing to really fall back on. Mm -hmm. So I had to trust my environment. I had to trust my partner who actually lent his name on my business. I owned zero mm -hmm. and everything was in his thing. So I learned to trust people, mm -hmm. to understand people and to trust people. And that's, I think, what I have done. So I trust people and they, mm -hmm. by and large, 90, 99%, they don't betray me, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the main goals of, uh, for the Greek economy is to bring here foreign investors uh, you are a foreign investor here, and uh, you're turning to a Greek the more it goes. What do, you, what do you have to tell to the people that, to the businessmen, they would like to invest in Greece, but they hesitate, or they don't know the environment? Well, I know the environment a lot less than they do, of course, but uh, sometimes when you're very close, you miss out the big picture. And uh, I think... I'm actually too junior to advise Greek businessmen on what to do, but I can tell them what I do. Foreign investors. So, so, ah, foreign if, investors. If you have to, you know, to oh, Foreign investors, of course, yeah. I, I can just tell them that, look, uh, invest in the long term, mm -hmm. believe in Greece. Uh, you know, if you want to invest money and you want to take your money out, mm -hmm. go somewhere else, you know. In Greece, invest really for the long term because this is a country mm -hmm. that you know, will give you long-term results. There are the great quality of people here. It's a great environment. Uh, it has a, I don't know why, a very poor reputation in many Western countries. But if you look to the East, we think Greeks are great people. Mm -hmm. Greek so, election, ah, oh, so. Oh, yeah, go ahead, please. Greek elections are due next month. Will the results make any difference in your investment plans? I mean, we invested during the Alexis Tsipras government. Mm -hmm. uh, we have continued to invest now with uh, the Prime Minister Mitsotakis's mm -hmm. government. And uh, it looks like it will be either one of the two, or maybe, you know, or maybe a coalition of types. But uh, mm -hmm. there is no reason why anything should change. We will mm -hmm. continue investing. It also depends on the opportunities that are available. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, I think I'm getting a little bit more aggressive now, so maybe we might be investing into larger size uh, deals also, possibly. Mm -hmm. So uh, a new investment is due in Greece? Uh, there is one particular investment that I'm keen on. It's in our sector. So mm -hmm. let's hope it, it happens. Mm -hmm. If it happens, it will be one of our bigger investments or one of the biggest ones. I and a last question, which are your plans? Uh, for my plans are generally to have a good time, to enjoy life, to spend time with I my mean family. Business plans. <laughs> <laughs> business plans. Uh, we we try to grow our business organically most of the time by ten to fifteen percent a year, and we have mm -hmm. succeeded to do that. We are growing a little faster here in Greece, actually. Mm -hmm. So we will continue to do that. We will look at good quality opportunities if they are inorganic, and we will keep investing in our existing companies to grow, maybe take them, grow them faster, take them to different countries. Mm -hmm. But that is how I would, uh, I would look at my plans. They are more like, not really long term, but opportunistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the end, a very difficult, a very philosophical question. After seven years in Greece, Olympiakos or Panathinaikos? 
<laughs> I'm not a football fan, so <laughs> I, can't, I can't comment on this. Okay. But if you ask me things about cricket, I can tell you a little bit more. I, I don't know anything about cricket. <laughs> but I, I'm not a football okay, fan. Okay, and a last question. Uh, you are, let's say, a leading company in the bakery industry. Do you know how to bake, or only your wife knows how to bake? Uh, actually, my wife doesn't believe I know how to bake. <laughs> but I actually went through a bakery uh, uh, training school for about three months. Okay. So I, I probably know more than most of my production managers about the technical aspects of baking. But I have not baked for decades now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is very important, actually, to know all the, I, I know, the I, procedure. I know, I know, I know, I know the fake name. I, I can actually take training classes, I can actually teach, but I don't know whether I can still uh, bake with my hands. No. Okay. Mr. Kargival, it was a great honor having this discussion with you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you.